Welcome to a new video on my home automation series and today I'm going to talk about EVLink again uh, mainly for two reasons. First of all uh, the app has gone through a significant facelift. I'm saying this because the app has got a few new features but I think what is going to be most uh, relevant or most noticeable for the users is the, is the different look and feel especially this uh, main screen has been redesigned quite a lot. And the other reason I wanted to make this video because recently I have received an email that the IFTTT integration has been updated as well. I think we are going to spend more time on the IFTTT part so let me clear the UI changes. First of all the big thing is well obviously in the UI you are seeing that all your devices now appear in like a two column layout which you can clearly see here and I think on one hand it makes it easier to control your devices because well, you just have to scroll much less. You can see most of the details here. But also there are some functionalities that we have lost. For example, you can see here there is a T12 gang. Previously, we used to have like two push buttons here. So you can operate the, the different channels. But now you have to come into the app and control them, you know, within the, the detail screen of the, of the device. So yeah, that's probably one drawback. But uh, for single gang switches, for example, this on off or the touch, you still have the on off button on the main screen. So you don't have to go into the details. And also the same for the POW. The other small thing I've noticed that these devices have the son off logo. Maybe this is just pure branding, but it's also possible that now there will be more non son of devices that are compatible with the EVLink app, so they will show up a different logo. But this is purely a spe uh, speculation. I, I have no information about that. The other big change is how you can organize your devices. We have seen this in many other uh, applications, for example, the Tuya, that you can first of all organize your devices into different homes. So here, I just have my home but I would be able to create new homes and you know if I have EVLink uh, or some of devices across uh, let's say yeah my home or like, my rental place or um, like holiday home or something so you can just put them in different homes but also within the home you can also put them into different rooms and I haven't done that even though I have quite a few devices so I need to scroll quite a lot as opposed to just you know switching between rooms which you can also do. I think that's a nice one, especially if you have a lot of devices. Uh, the other th small thing which we haven't seen in the previous version is that if you create an automation, which is a, a push automation, so it's not based on a device trigger, but it's manual activation, now you can have uh, shortcuts for those on the top of the screen. So that's also a, a nice as well. It makes them easier to access than you know, going into the scenes. And when you look at the lower part of the screen, well, you have the home button where we are now. You have the scenes button, which is again something that we have seen. Again, this list has been um, redesigned to some extent, but it's still pretty much the same functionality. You have a big plus button in the middle. And I think we had a profile, similar profile in the past as well. And now we have a message area. And this is more like how you can you know interact with EV link and you know get uh, some of the sort of like blogs and yeah explore about new products or maybe offerings and any other notifications so that's all about the look and feel and now we can head over to IFTTT but before I do that the one other important thing is that with the new IFTTT integration we have to bring the devices up to the latest firmware. And when I look at my device, you can see that it has been updated to the latest firmware, which is 3.4.0. In a couple of months ago, when the, we had new firmwares like you know, 3.0 or 3.1, that firmware wasn't available for some of the old devices. Um, but now it looks like that even the older devices, I mean, I'm not talking about basic and because that was that always received the newest firmware. But I think if I remember correctly, TH1 was always lagging behind. But now even TH1 is on 3.4 and the same with the fan, the iFan. That was also lagging behind. Where is my iFan? It should be somewhere here. But anyway, that has gotten the 
3.4 version as well. So that's a good thing and it's probably because of the new functionalities in IFTTT. Okay, so we are in IFTTT now and I'm just going to go straight in as I would create a new IFTTT integration. I haven't set up any you know, demo scenarios at the moment, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to look at what we can do on the if and what we can do on the then side when it comes to the EV-Link you know, plugin. So I'm just going to click on get more. I'm going to do it on my phone or on my laptop and then create a new one. So with IFTTT you have an if side of the automation and the then side. So now let's look at what we can do on the if side. So if I click on if and I just type EV link so we can find it because the list is huge. And if I remember correctly, I mean, I did a video about IFTT integration probably two years ago. The options that we had was really limited and the options was pretty much like what we see on the screen uh, now. So there were options for one, two, maybe three channel or I think even four channel plugs being turned on and off. And the same was available for the switches as well. So these would be the if uh, options when let's say your touch or T1 or the basic or well, in fact, any of your devices get turned on either from the app or using the button or the touch screen. And this was pretty much available for all the devices. So if I, if I select the one channel plug, then if we wait for a you know, second, we can see that, yeah, pretty much all my devices are available here. Yeah, so, you know, from really old ones like the T-Touch and the TH1, oh, sorry, the TH10, to the new ones like the POW Release 2 or, you know, the TX series or your Release 3 Sonoff. So there is nothing new here. I think probably I don't have any uh, free channel plugs, but that's probably still only the uh, CH4. And of course, when you select the multi-channel plug, I only have the T1, then you can select which channel and then, you know, which state it should trigger the, uh, the IFTT integration. So this is something that we have seen already. But if I start scrolling down, well, first of all, we see a few things which are related to the bulb and this is the B1. And since the B1, we also have the LED strip. So these would be the two devices that uh, would uh, tr can be triggered based on if the dimmer is selected. So you can see the D1 or if I pick the brightness, Okay, this, it's still the D1 which is available. So all these products where, you know, like dimmable stuff would be able to respond to triggers like if the brightness is changed or the dimmer is turned on and off. The next one is the door sensor open is open or closed. I don't have any of these. And actually this is something which is probably coming in the future because I was told that EVLink is planning to release or uh, IT is planning to release a new set of products which are based on Zigbee and I think they're going to have a lot of sensors um, because you know previously you could use a door sensor with a, a RF bridge but in that it was determined as you know general input devices so I don't think that that door sensor would you know work with this one so it has to be one of the new products which I haven't seen yet but the integration in IFTTT is already built so that's nice temperature goes above or below and that's something that um, I was complaining about in the TH1 that in the TH1 you can build um, an automatic function so it can control the relay on the TH1 but the the temperature and the Oh, actually, no, the temperature and the humidity was available in the scenes. So that was nice. So you can control other devices as well. But now with IFTTT, you can control devices that are outside the EV-Link application. So still you can use your TH1 to create a temperature trigger. And, uh, and then you can set the temperature. And yeah, you can set whether it goes above or goes below that temperature. So that's nice. And the same applies for humidity as well. So for me, TH1, that works with that trigger. 
The next section is related to power consumption and power monitoring. And actually, I now I remember that this was the one that I was really complaining about, that there are these really you know, useful products like the POW or the POW Release 2, and you can only use it very limited uh, capacity because in the scenes, you can't create an automation based on voltage. But now it is available in IFTTT. As you can see, I'm, I can select both of my POWs. Again, I can specify whether the voltage goes above or below, and you can specify the voltage threshold, and you can create a notification. So you can send, for example, a notification for your phone, and that would give you, a, you know, an alert if the, the voltage drops in your network. But of course, the same applies to power. And they have added the electric, uh, the electric current as a separate value as well. I mean, for me, I would just use the power. I mean, voltage is more or less constant, uh, but you can do it either way. You can use the, either the power or the current as well. The next section is related to lights. So when the light is turned on and off, or when the brightness goes above or below a different uh, value. So it is just like, you know, plugs and switches, but for some reason they separated uh, lights out as a, you know, as a different category. And here we can see that the B1 and the strip is available. And now I just realized that previously when we talked about the brightness, it was showing the D1, so that's the dimmer control. The next is the light brightness goes above or below. And here I don't have any of the devices available for me. I would have assumed that the B1 and the strip would be available, but these could be some other products which I don't own yet or haven't reviewed. So I can't really tell which is related to, because again, just to go back these brightness and above, this only works with a dimmer. So it says spot, smart dimmer, which is, as far as I know, it's only the D1, but there could be some new products coming out. The fan, the eye fan that I just mentioned, that has a separate light. So yeah, they thought that, you know, either the, well, the fan or the light output is, is considered again, not a switch and not a light. So they created a separate trigger for that. Maybe it's for technical reasons, but again, you just have to remember that if you are using that particular device, you have to use this trigger, the fan light trigger. The next one is the RF bridge alarm activated. And that actually just um, confirms that the, the door sensor that we have seen before is, that, is definitely something different from the RF bridge. Because um, you know everything which is RF bridge appears to be uh, included in here. So if I click and, and I select the alarm, then I can see all the alarms that I've configured in my RF bridge which there was a door sensor and there was a couple of buttons. So if you do this, you can also use these to trigger an IFTTT event. So again, that's nice. A few more use cases for those old RF bridge devices. The next one is also quite surprising. I'm quite happy about it. Because again, if you remember when I reviewed the, um, the Son of Camera, I was complaining about the fact that you can't use the scenes uh, to trigger a motion detection. So for some reason it's not available within the EVLink application, but now they include it in the uh, IFTTT. So I can select the camera and I can create a trigger when the camera senses motion and you know trigger something else. And for the rest of the options, we are going to see uh, things that haven't, well, as far as I know, haven't been released, so they are working on it. So there, it looks like that there is going to be a water sensor or diffuser. There would be some Zigbee motion sensors that can be triggered. Um, yeah, motion detected, motion not detected. And there is going to be some leak, maybe a water leakage detector. There is going to be, there is yet another door sensor, which specifically says a Zigbee door sensor. So again, you can create a trigger based on whether that sensor uh, senses an open or a closed state of, let's say, a door or a window. Uh, there will be some Zigbee switches available as well. Oh, and we can even have different events, like if the, pre uh, if the switch is pressed, double pressed or long pressed. And it also looks like that there will be some electric curtains available soon. 
and you can do something when it's opening or closing. So that's nice because the you know IFTTT is uh, really the only option within the EVLink app to cross integrate uh, different ecosystems. And before that, the options within this was really you know limited. And I couldn't see, well, of course, there were a few scenarios where you would be using the EVLink app, but again, that was quite limited. But now you can really mix and match, you know, with IFTTT, you can decide that your wall switches are going to be, you know, son of touches or T1 or TX uh, wall switches. But then for light bulbs, maybe you want like a fancier or a more powerful light bulb, um, you know, better than anything that uh, Sonoff can offer. So maybe you can use a Hue and you can just use the IFTTT integration. So if you press the Sonoff wall switch, which is, you know, for example, one or two or three channel switch turned on, then that can activate the Hue. Um, maybe this is a bad example because you know these events were available before but I guess you get the idea like you know if you have uh, the camera detects emotion again you can switch on all the lights whether these would be son of lights or maybe you know Philips Hue lights or maybe some Tuya lights because now you can cross integrate these uh, with the IFTTT so that was all the trigger side so let me just pick something so we can carry on and go the other side of the IFTTT, I think they call it recipes. So that was the if side. And then let's look at on the when side. And here I'm going to pick EVLink as well. Of course, it doesn't make a lot of sense to control something from EVLink to EVLink in via IFTTT, but I just want to go through the functionality. And here we are seeing less you know, new changes, but I, I think that's actually fine. So again, we can use plugs or switches, whether they are one, two, three, or four channels to turn them on and off. So these plugs would be all your, oh, let me pick a single channel one. So these would be all your, yeah, son of basics and the TX ones and the POWs and the TH ones. And the light switches would be all the, you know, the touch, well, that's interesting because it's pretty much the same devices. So you can use either the switch or the plug action to control. Maybe there is going to be some exclusivity for some of the devices. You can turn your smart dimmer. So that would be the D1. There is a separate action for the D1 for some reason. And you can also use the uh, dimmer uh, brightness. So you can set the brightness to a certain degree and you can also set the color of the light and then let's see what device is supported okay so that is supported for the both the b1 which is the light bulb and the strip so that's nice you can control the light and the color for these externally and again for some it wasn't available in the scenes so maybe you need to go to ifttt if you want to build some um, temp, uh, integration like that also, besides the color, you also have the option to select uh, color temperature. It looks like the other side of the RF bridge integration is done as well. So we have seen previously how the alarms can use can be used as a triggers, and we can also use the buttons. Uh, for example, the garage. If you remember my RF bridge video, it was a long time ago. I just used a really small. Um, RF relay that I just named garage so you can activate it from here as well the fan Control light again just like it's a different trigger. It's a different action as well And we have some actions for some of the new products that are hopefully coming soon So you have electric curtains you have diffusers and also you can set the percentage of the electric curtains and That would be all so as we can see we are getting quite a few new functions, both on the trigger side and on the action side. And some of these functions actually tell us what are the products that we can expect from IT in the near future. That was my video on the new features in the EV League app and also the revised functionality in the IFTTT integration. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.